Hello fellow hams and YouTubers. Well, a local ham picked up this MFJ power supply at a ham fest and he tried to put it to use on HF and immediately had lots of reports of RF on his audio. Now he's using an NFED antenna which is known to radiate a little bit off the coax. It's not terrible but he does get a little bit of RF in the shack. Uh, he didn't have any problems at all though with an Astron power supply that he had. But the Astron was only rated at uh, uh, 15 amps. So this one is rated at 35 and uh, it looks like it's in pretty good shape on the outside but he had the RF issue. Now right away what struck me, let me unplug it here, is this. MFJ, what were you thinking? Really? A power supply with only a two-prong plug? No grounded outlet? No ground on the input? <clears throat> That doesn't make me happy. <laughs> and that introduces something that I'm going to show you here in a, in a moment. Let me reposition the camera. The problem is without the chassis of the power supply being grounded, you end up with a transient voltage on the chassis. Now, since it's coming through small capacitors, not enough to shock you, uh, but certainly a potential. Let me uh, demonstrate. I've got these power resistors here that are going to provide a load. And on the power supply, I'm going to flip it on, and uh, we've got 12 volts. We're drawing about 6 amps to my resistive load. I've got the meter sitting here, and what I'm going to do with the meter is I'm going to put one probe, and this is on AC volts, on the output of the power supply. And I'm going to touch the house ground with the other, out, other probe. And you can see we got a little uh, AC voltage there. Five volts on there. Now what about the chassis side? The chassis of the power supply. 61 volts AC. So you can see we get a little potential. Oops. Slipped off my... Uh, there we go. 62 volts AC from the negative lead to the house ground. Now I can touch that and I don't feel anything, and I can touch it between the ground and the outlet, and I, maybe I, if I really concentrate I can feel it, but it's not enough current to hurt you. But it is enough to cause a, a little bit of a ground loop, a little bit of current loop uh, flowing through there. So we're going to open this guy up, and uh, we're going to have a look, see what's going on inside. And I'm going to replace, for certain, I'm going to replace the AC cord with a three-prong three, uh, three prong cord and ground the chassis. And that should eliminate his RFI problems. And I may also add some additional RF filtering to the bus on the front once we, uh, once we see what's going on. So, let's open it up. Well, the cover came off pretty easy. Uh, six screws on the top, four on each side and uh, it just lifts right off. And this is typical early MFJ hand assembled uh, construction. They try to make things a little neat but uh, some of the soldering, well we'll look at that in a moment. Immediately I was struck by this though. This is the incoming line cord. And here we have wire nuts, crimp, crimp nuts with a mauve um, lightning arrestor uh, spike protector just attached through the crimps. But they're not they're not mounted to any type of terminal or anything. They're just crimp nutted on right here. So yeah. So we'll rewire that. And that'll make it a lot safer. And grounding the chassis to the uh, ground on the AC uh, will probably most certainly eliminate the uh, the RFI issues. But let's take a look at the the layout in here. Now you can see from that camera angle, here's our regulator board here, where we've got control and regulation and several adjustments. I, I haven't seen this many adjustments in a power supply before. What are they labeled? 
This is 13.8 volt adjust. And these two are not labeled. This is labeled RV2 Max. Oh, these are the meter adjustments. Okay, RV2V, RV2A. So these are the uh, tweaks or tunes for, or uh, adjustments to, to get the meters on. Down here below, we have a capacitor bank. They uh, grouped a bunch of uh, 4,700 microfarad caps, probably in parallel to provide the filtering, the main filtering. Uh, over here on the other side, I'm gonna flip it around so we can have a better look at this arrangement. Okay, two bridge rectifiers that look like they are paralleled. Yeah, they're paralleled. So we got two bridge rectifiers mounted on a heat sink sandwiched against another heat sink where we have our main power transistors here. Um, there's a fan that then blows through the fins of the heat sinks out the back. So that's kind of a clever cooling. Uh, these resistors are current balancing resistors. There's two per transistor and they run up through this board. So what these do, um, transistors are never exactly matched. So if you have them in parallel, uh, one transistor might hog more current than the other and run hotter. So a trick is on each each transistor you put a really low resistance, right, with uh, fairly close resistors. And what that does is it allows uh, the resistors to set a minimum, so um, our maximum current. So even if these two transistors are a little bit off, at their maximum they're going to have a matched resistance here. So this is going to provide the same amount of current flow through the transistors. It's going to balance them basically. So that's what these resistors are doing. They're balancing the, uh, the transistors. So not one of them hogs more current than the others. Uh, we have a little PC board here and here. Looks like a couple of driver transistors or... Yeah. Yeah, okay. This is a driver that drives these. This might be voltage regulator for the... Yeah, I think this is a voltage regulator for the circuitry down here on this board, so... Fairly simple design. But look at these solder connections up here, right right here especially. Let me zoom in on this. MFJ hand assembles these, and they're always a little sloppy. Sorry about the adjusting here. There we go. See this? It's just kind of wrapped around solder slopped in there. I mean, they actually made a connection, but not a very good one. That looks like it's only partially... It's not moving, but uh, this one over here is the same way. It's just kind of wrapped it around there, slapped a little solder in. <laughs> and the uh, connections down on the transformer's uh, secondary output are the same way. They just wrapped the wire around there and kind of soldered it. So it's all hand soldered. It's, um, yeah, hand assembled. Well, that's MFJ for you. It's really not a bad power supply. I'm just completely blown away by the fact that they went with a two wire AC mains cord. So I think that's the main issue. So we'll get that uh, we'll get that replaced, and then I'll show you what I did. Here's a quick note for those of you that are maybe not familiar with doing AC wiring. There's an, a standard color code on these, and I've just double checked with the meter because you never know with Chinese manufacturers. But green is always the ground, which corresponds to the center lug on the uh, plug. Um, the plug will be labeled N for neutral and L. I don't know why they call it L, but now it's the hot. So I've already owned it out to make sure, but neutral is always white and black is always the hot. So where that matters, you want to know that white's neutral, black is hot, and green is ground. Ground and neutral will be tied together back at your electrical panel, so sometimes it's important to keep those straight. Um, in this case, I think we're pretty good because it's, a, it's isolated through a transformer. What I'm doing here is I put a ground lug. You can see, you see it there, a little solder lug down here on the uh, on this bolt. And that'll give me a ground point to the metal case. And I'm just going to solder the uh, ground directly to that 
um, ground point and then wire the hot and neutral back in the way that they were up here. They use these little crimp-on caps and uh, I never really trusted those very much. I mean this one up here is pretty tight. That one down there fell apart. I just put this nut wire nut on there to keep them together so I wouldn't lose track of which wires needed to be together. I'm going to uh, lightly solder those together and then put the uh, crimp on cap back on. If I can't get that to crimp then I'll just uh, after I've soldered it I'll just screw on the wire nut and that'll be just as good at isolating it. So got the strain relief in, got the three wire plug here. I'm just going to do the soldering wire that back up and then we'll put the power supply on the oscilloscope put it under load and see if the output looks clean okay we're done with this part I have the uh, green soldered to the lug down here and uh, I uh, couldn't get the crimp on cap back on well enough with the four wires so what I did was I soldered them um, just to make sure we had a good connection and then screwed the wire nut on tight so that'll isolate it but that's the neutral side so that's not that much of a risk if that ever did come off and this touched the case it would be electrically tied to the ground anyway but it's not going to come off that nuts on there tight and that's soldered so those wires are together and the hot is isolated by this glass sleeve and comes down to the fuse holder so the hot goes right to the fuse from the fuse it's also isolated with another sleeve where it comes up here to the power switch which then turns it on and off energizing this wire which comes back no energizing this wire which comes back to this wire cap the other side of the mob and the primary of the transformer the other side of the transformer comes back here to the neutral on which oh that's the that's the light that's the neutral feedback for the power light in the uh, switch um, so we should be good I'll ohm it out obviously before I uh, switch it on to make sure that uh, I didn't screw up the wiring and we have a, the resistance of the primary of the transformer present at the outlet and not a dead short <laughs> but I was careful those wires are fine the other thing I'm going to do on this power supply is I'm going to go around to the other side where the uh, 12 volts is coming out and uh, they have a point double oh one cap across the positive to the negative I am also going to put .001 caps from the positive to the chassis and from the negative to the chassis as RF bleeds um, to the chassis which is now tied to the AC ground which will bleed off RF coming back on the power line. So that should quiet it up. Alrighty, a little RF filtering here. We've added a .001, <clears throat> .001 cap from the positive terminal to a ground lug that's in the chassis and here's one from the negative terminal to the ground lug that's in the chassis so that should bleed off any RF coming in through the power lines and if for whatever reason some got in through the AC line that should bleed it before it goes out to the radio so that should dramatically reduce any RFI coming through the power supply time to power it up and see what it looks like on the scope well that's pretty good. You can see barely hardly detectable ripple at all and that's on 50 millivolts per division so it's pretty clean. It's actually, well, I can go to 20 millivolts per division and you can start to see we've got maybe 10 millivolts of ripple there. Uh, so uh, and I'm, I'm drawing about 6 amps out of the power supply with this resistive load. Uh, so I'd say that's pretty good. That's pretty clean. I mean, that's <laughs> 10 millivolts. That's hardly any at all. And uh, nice blue LEDs. Interesting power supply. You've got some uh, nice outputs here. You've got your main DC output here, which is your full 35 amp output. Um, you've got a uh, automotive type power socket max 10 amps and then you've got these nice little uh, clip-in connectors max 6 amps so that would be okay for running uh, uh, small gear around the shack uh, an antenna tuner like an LDG antenna tuner or uh, things like that would uh, you could power them right off of these plug-in clips here no problem so there we go 
we'll see. We'll get this back to the owner and uh, let him get it on the air and see if uh, this eliminates that little bit of RFI he was getting when he was using this particular power supply. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please like the video with a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, go ahead and subscribe. Also, join the Facebook page. We can discuss the content of the videos, ask questions, find answers, and hopefully develop a lively community. Thanks again.